Hey, welcome back to another Mind the Mic podcast. I'm your host, Shubs, here with a very special guest in the building. She's a film producer, a mother, and she does uh, a lot of things, which we'll get into as the episode goes on. Sonia Kutsami, what's goody, Queen? How are you? Hey, I'm good, Shubs. How are you going? Yeah, yeah, all good. Another day, another another daily deposit. Yeah, just continuing and the thank- journey. Awesome. Thank you for having me on today. Thank you. No, no, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. For anybody that's never heard of you or never seen you around, can you tell the people about yourself? Sure. I am a mama of three children. Um, I live in Sydney. I'm a film producer and I advocate against a lot of um, a lot of charities, especially child trafficking. Oh, let's go. So born in Sydney, uh, what was your upbringing like? Very rough. I have, I'm from Jordan, so it's, I'm Middle Eastern, so yep. it's Arabic background. I had a very strict father. I couldn't do anything. So I was, I was asked to do so many things in the entertainment industry, but because of my strict father, I was unable to do so. Um, so upbringing was quite harsh, quite tough, and um, yeah, really, really strict, to be honest. And, and then I ventured out into the corporate world, and that's when um, I just, grew from there oh yeah solid so siblings you got any of those yes i have a brother he's uh, almost 60 and i've got a sister she lives in the states so she's coming down in a couple of months because we've got a family wedding so we'll see her again were you, were you yeah. close with your siblings Gregor? Very, very close very close i'm the baby i'm the youngest oh so, you're the baby I'm the baby yeah hitting 48 hitting the, the big 48. five yeah. Yeah. What's the plans for the Big Five O? Any plans on the horizon for the Big Five O? I'd love to go overseas. Love to go to Europe. Never been to Europe. Homeland. Uh, well, I'd like to take my kids back home, but yep. for my fiftieth, on my own with just with some cousins, just have a girly ah, trip. Yeah. Girly yeah. trip. Yeah, the girly trip. That's it. Hundred percent. You see, children. How many of those do you have? If you, you don't have to share, I, if you don't I want. Have- I have three. I have a 17-year-old boy. Mm-hmm. I have a 13-year-old girl and a 12-year-old boy. My little boy, Christian, he has Down syndrome and he's the the cutest little soul you'll ever meet. He, he loves everyone. And um, so apart from me being a mother, I'm also a foster mama. So I, okay. I have children. Yeah, so I have little ones in and out all the time. How, how long have you done that for, the, the foster mama ring? Uh, for, mm-hmm. a year. for a year. Oh, yeah. You're enjoying yeah. it? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work because they do come with a lot of problems. Some, you know, have autism. Some have special needs, uh, especially because mm. I have my own special needs. Um, but I've got my eldest too. They actually help. It, it's quite rewarding. It's sad giving them away, but oh, alternatively, okay. yeah. But we're just there as a backup, just to support the parents until they sort what they need to out. So oh. it's a good life for them, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, no, beautiful. What what kind of lessons do you think having a a, a son with Down syndrome has have taught you? Just one word: yeah. patience. <laughs> That's it, eh? Simple. Hey, patience. I'm I'm quite patient, Shubs, but yep. my little boy, you know, because he's got special needs, and I live a very hectic, busy life. You know, in between my mm-hmm. filming and on set, um, yes. going to gardens and my charities and and everything else that I'm doing. Uh, I, I am pushed to my limits, but but by the grace of God, he gives me a lot of patience. <laughs> Shout out to the little man, man. Christian, eh? Yeah. Oh, man. Christian, patience. Yeah. There was, you go. He was actually in an ad a couple of months ago, in a Finnish ad. So, oh, um, in Finland? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that'll come out soon. I don't put, I don't oh. put my other two children in. Um, I, I do not trust the industry. Um, mm-hmm. With with my typically developed children, with my little one, um, I get to monitor what he does. Yeah, you're there, right? Yeah, yeah you're, I'm, there, you're there. I'm there, and it's just more of the exposure, just the experience for him socialising. Um, it has nothing to do with anything else, but just to him to experience other things that he, yeah. he normally. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe a brother that's uh, you know of the same ilk might see him on there and go, "Hey, I want to do that." You know what I mean? So Maybe you can't be what yeah. you can't see, right? So, yeah, you never know. 100%. 100%. 100%. So, 
obviously film producer how does all that come about have you always been had a passion for film like from a young age yeah when i was younger when i was at home before i got married i was doing mm. some extra work tv ads infra commercials for beauty products but because of my my strict upbringing i was asked to do something more and more with um i don't know if you've heard of tony barber Sounds tony familiar. barber Continue. He's like a Larry Edburn back. Oh, okay, okay. Back in the day, back in the day, yeah. Yeah, so I was asked to do a TV ad with him, but because my father was so strict, he's like, no way is my little girl going to be on the big TV. What's the Jordanians yeah. are going to think? It was more of a, a shame thing for my dad, so I completely couldn't do anything. So I went oh. off to school, went off to graduate in business, and I went into the corporate world. And seven years ago, I met an, um, someone in the acting industry and he just threw me into producing. I had no idea what a producer does, Shubs. No idea. I know what it is. I just don't know what they do. <laughs> okay. So when so I was pretty much self-taught. So I've produced um, a lot of films, documentaries um, that have been sold overseas. Um, mm -hmm. There is a, a, an episode that we've done, sorry, five episodes of a series that's on Amazon Prime and in 80 countries. So since then, um, is it on there now? Can we can we know about that or what's that one called? Yeah, it's called a troubled town. It was seven years ago. It was it's it's a gangsterish uh, type of it's a gang, yeah gangster drama genre. Um, yep. That was my first thing that I did, and it was a really really small budget film with the produce with the other produ exec producer. Um, but yeah, so just moving on, I, I do have a big, big um, premiere coming up, which is the story of Nadia. So that's Nadia. a Nadia. That's she's. It's based on a, on real life. Uh, it just talks about she was actually possessed by um, a demon, and it was mm. actually yeah. So it's real life stuff. It's it's quite touchy and really, really. It's not for everyone. Um, it, it's not scary. It's not, horror. <laughs> it's not a horror film or anything like that. Oh, um, okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking like this is like one of the last exorcism, or this no, is like paranormal no, no. activity. Oh, no, okay. no, no, not at all. But um, but yeah. So that's in post production now. It's in editing now. So hopefully by yeah. the end of the year, we'll have a big premiere for that. And yeah, and just working on on my baby, on my film now. Yeah, which is so, yeah, which is proper. Hundred percent. It's um, Proverbs twenty two six. Um, I, you know, I'm a Christian Which, woman. Yeah, yeah. What does that say? Proverbs twenty two six. Proverbs is a book in the Bible, and it's uh, chapter twenty two verse six, and it says, "Raise up your child in God's word, so when they grow up, they shall never depart from the word." So oh that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, so that's what I'm that doing. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing with my children. I raise them up in God's word. We take them to Bible studies, to church, and mm -hmm. we talk about we talk about God. And they go to private Christian schools. So um, it's very important for me as a Christian woman, and especially yep. you know I'm, I'm divorced, so it's just it's myself raising my children. Um, so it's very important for me that my children they live and breed God's word because it is a jungle out there in the dark world and if they are protected by god's word they'd be able to discern and be able to use their wisdom to be able to control and decide for the any you know any decisions that they need to um it's it's an armor god's word to mm -hmm. me is an armor. it's a protector and um it's protected me from a lot of things um, so that's why I wanted to, Proverbs 22 6. So it is a Christian film based on Jesus Christ and how God can redeem the most wicked. It's also about government corruption, which Ooh, I expose. Talk about it. Very, very touchy. I expose a lot of government corruption worldwide, whether it's um, the corporation corruption, whether it's child trafficking corruption, sacrifice corruption, money laundry corruption. Um, any type of corruption um, I like to expose because not many people know what's going on in the real world. There are so many people, Shubs, that are so asleep. And and mm. my heart goes out to them because I, I was once one of those women, you know, it's like, what do you mean they traffic children? Mm. Who does? 
the world the world the, the systems that are in place are created that way to keep people asleep for sure so it's not surprised <laughs> don't feel <laughs> don't feel crazy like you know there's like you said there's so many more people are uh, are asleep than are awake to a lot of the stuff you know what i mean or they just mosey on through life like you know nothing's going on but yeah once you know it's hard to you can't unknow right you can't, you can't. And um, I, I was part of a, an organisation um, that rescues children from sexual exploitation and human trafficking. So I was with them for five years and I personally funded a raid in the Philippines and we rescued 19 young children as young as five. So wow. that's a lot all, of baby. Yeah, talk about <laughs> it. I love that. <laughs> It's, I hate that, you, but I love that. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is, Shams? It's something the human eye should have never seen, nor the ears should ever, ever. But when you get to see and hear things, you wish you can undo them and unhear them, but you can't because if you do, you're just like the other people that are asleep and that are um, afraid to know the truth because there there's so much that i know and sometimes you think is that a, an asset or is it a liability is it a good yeah. thing or is it a bad thing um and it's a good thing because you know i'm a mother that's raising my children on my own and it is yes. definitely a good thing because if i'm awake i'll be damned right to make sure my kids are awake and so you know when you look at these films that are out there and you look at these artists these singers there are so many subliminal messages in all of their movies, in all of their dance clips, in all of their music clips, and they have to tell you what they're doing, and they do. And then most of it's demonic, and it's ruled by Satan. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are millions and millions of people that worship these people. And um, so that's why it's very important for me to to raise my children a in God's word, and b in the reality of the demonic force that's happening in real life beautiful so when when before we get into actually how that all came about how did you actually you said you were asleep how did you become awake to the sex trafficking was that the, was that the initial thing to wake you up to a lot of corruption was it sex trafficking uh, no, and stuff like that? no it was when i was married 17 years ago 17 years okay. ago i I don't know, I stumbled across uh, some sort of website and it was child trafficking, government corruption. Mm. And back then, I thought the government wants, you know, they love you. They want to protect mm. you. They want to serve mm. you and do you good. That's that's the impression that I was under. I was quite mm. naive, quite gullible as a, as a young woman, only because I was quite sheltered in my life with my family. Yes. So I, didn't, I didn't know much because I couldn't go out. I couldn't see much, and so therefore I believed everything I saw on the TV. So when I actually saw it 17 years ago, I actually saw something that that Bill Gates said, and he spoke about what's yet to come, which was COVID. And so when COVID came, it wasn't a surprise to me because when you know and you go deep and I go deeper. So pretty much 17 years ago, I went down the so-called rabbit hole, that they call it, and I, I'm a researcher. I I love to, if I see something or hear something, I don't take it for face value. I do my due diligence research. I make sure it is true, it is correct, and I keep diving in. And the more I kept diving in, the more the more awake I became. And and here we are, yeah, 17 years later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so it's pretty much just, you know, being exposed to a lot of things, which which is a good thing. Yeah, that's that's solid, solid. You know, you know that like um, I remember you did like charity events around that. Uh, uh, did you put a lot of that charity, the 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 the, the money from that, did that push towards that Filipino thing? Because I remember yeah. that a, a big uh, I don't know, no. ball or gala or something. Yeah. yeah, I I personally funded the raid that was separate to the galas that I oh, set up. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. so I personally funded that. So what did the galas do? So the Garlic, so what I did is I hosted four events. I hosted three in Sydney and one in Melbourne. And we had, um, you know, close to maybe 1,800 people come all up. You know, we had 500 here in Sydney. So one event, we raised approximately $135,000. Um, mm. So every raid is $10,000. So that was 13 oh, raids. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So that's 13. Where were those ones? Where were those ones, those 13 raids? 
they were all over from Nepal to India to the Thailand to the Philippines to Papua New Guinea. It's huge, it's a huge, it's, huge, it's huge over the yeah, part of the world, eh? But you know what, Shoves? It even happens here in our own oh, soil. Of course. 100%. It happens everywhere, mainly the third world countries. The organization that I was with had no jurisdiction to do anything here in Australia, so they took it to third mm -hmm. world countries. So they married up with the police station, with the officers there. Um, yeah. But you've got to be careful, Shabs, that some of these officers back home or anywhere all over the world, they're involved in it, that they, they take money from trafficking, whether it's child trafficking or human slavery. So it's very, very important to know who you're actually teaming up with because if you're teaming up with the wrong person they're going to give you the wrong details all your resources and all the money is going to go to one raid when there's no one there to rescue so that's why this organization takes months and months and months to plan and to execute a raid because they will get they get so many leads but all of these leads are just a distraction to transport the, these kids further and further away wow. so it's, full on, it's full on stuff so out of oh, that 135,000, we get we got to raise, uh, sorry, rescue uh, approximately 100 children all up, including my raid that I did. It was 120 children that we rescued. Wow, yeah. that's awesome, huh? That's they yeah. like, like obviously we need more people in the space doing it too, because they're not, you know what I mean? Like you're doing, yeah. you're doing awesome, but there's, you know, um. What's the go? I remember watching like a lot of Tim Ballard's interviews talking about how much, you know what I mean? You know, how, how people don't understand that there's more slavery today than there ever was, you know what I mean? So shout out to you for making a difference, but and hopefully you and uh, other people can listen to this and be inspired if they have funds to be able to help or any means yeah. or no people to yeah. put towards their cause because it's beautiful. It's beautiful what you do, Sonia. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. But with, with Tim, he actually uh, rescued two siblings, brother and sister, and that's how the Sound of Freedom came about. So I don't know if yeah. any of you get yeah, Sound of Freedom. Maybe, yeah. yeah, so the Sound of Freedom was backed up by Angel Studios. So Angel Studios are in, uh, studios in the States that take films that Hollywood do not take. Oh. That's why Of course Hollywood massive... don't take them because they're fucking a part of it. Absolutely, yeah. they're all. Um, actually, I won't say all. They are nah, not all. Not all the people, but yeah, you know, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, something like that. But um, yeah, even these. You know, I don't even like to use the word celebrities. You know, these known people. Um, they've got a hand in it. They so have a hand in it, and there's so many different positions in it. You don't need to to be in the physical sense of sexually abusing these children even a handler you are part of that so we, a handler means you're a transporter so you're transporting these children to that even though that they're not in the the abuse side of things but you are partaking mm -hmm. satan's work and, and you are selling off these children and through your actions and through your transport it, it's quite demonic um but the good thing about covid i'm going to say shams is that it stopped all the traffic all borders shut when the whole world shut these children couldn't oh, be transported and you know I what see. happened after that? The online trafficking increased by almost uh, what was it a thousand percent if not more wow, because they couldn't transport times. These, yeah so they couldn't transport these children because the borders were shut so online trafficking or yeah online abuse um even, you know, I'm going to say it, even the, the pornography, when you look at pornography, and this goes to out to men and to women, um, most of these women that you see performing are forced. Most mm -hmm. of these women, you may, you know, you know, these men and women that watch it, they may look at these women and think they look beautiful, they are attractive, they may... It seem like as though they're enjoying themselves and they may even be good at it in terms of performing because you need to be an, an actress to perform but what people do not know shoves that most of these women put on this facade 
that they're doing this free willingly but behind the scene they are forced they are threatened and if they don't they will be abused so let this piece of information be a reminder to anyone out there that does watch it that when you click on to watching it you are feeding into the demonic realm of satan and you are feeding into putting money into the hands of these abusers so mm. i just wanted to put that out because i learned so much in the child trafficking industry that even pornography goes hand in hand with child trafficking whether it's child trafficking or trafficking of women it starts with the pornography industry and so mm. let this anyone that wants to click next time on whatever websites they are just remember that these women are there for your pleasure through the threats behind their backs. So just be very, mm. very careful. With that. Is there every woman? Would you say, or, or you're saying majority of the, a lot of the industry is propped up by that? Uh, I don't know statistics to be honest, but I'm sure right. that there's women out there that do it willingly. Absolutely, a hundred percent. They 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 enjoy what they do. The money mm. is great. The perks is great. They're aligned with top producers and top directors they will yeah. do anything to get noticed which is the sad thing but they enjoy it they want to but on the other hand there are millions of other women that are forced to do this and mm. um and you'll never get to know unless you speak to someone that's sort of come out from it and exposed it and there have been a lot of women that have come out and they've exposed it saying I may look like I'm enjoying myself, but after that, she has showers where she scrubs herself for hours and she cries. Wow. And that's the heartbreaking thing because men and women don't know this. You know, they get their pleasure out of watching it and they have no regard to what happens to these women after. So let that be for thought for any man or woman um, that, that enjoys that. That yeah. the women are watching. Uh, are forced. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Heard yeah. it from Sonia. Hey, eh? yeah. out there. Well, there you go. So, going back to the Philippine read, how, how did that come about for yourself? You just. Um, I, did you there, fund that yourself? Or you just... Yeah, I, I funded that myself. Um, I, I heard about this organization through my church, and I, I love children. I have three of my own, I foster, I, I adore children. So when I heard about these children being trafficked, what can Sonia do about it? And mm -hmm. praise God, financially I was in a in a good place. And so I had the team over and we spoke about what Sonia could do. Um, I prayed on it, I thought about it, and I said, this is a raid that I'd like to do. Um, so pretty much the organization puts a team together there are rescuers, there's usually, depending on how big the raid is, and no one will ever know uh, how big it is. So it could be between five to sometimes 15 personnel on a raid. Uh, and it's not just, hey, Sonia, we've got a tip here in the Thailand at this bar or at this club or at this warehouse. It takes mm -hmm. months and months. The team of Destiny Rescue need to know who goes in, who goes out, how many people are in charge? How many children are there? What are the ages? What are the times that they get transported? Um, who are their clientele? Um, who goes in? Who goes out? These, all of this preparation lasts months. So it's not just quick in and out because sometimes that, that team of Destiny Rescue, they may receive a tip saying there's 10 children at this club. And in a matter of two, three weeks, that 10 has increased to 50 now. So they had to, it's pretty much, do we go in now and rescue them or do we wait a few more days in order for it to grow, in order to rescue more? So it's really, really tough for the team to decide. But, um, but yeah, so that's what happens. They, they research. Um, there are vans and vans and vans that, are, that rock up. All of the team are armed. Every single one is armed. Yeah, and most of these volunteers, most of these rescuers are volunteers. They leave their homes and their families from Australia shoves and they actually go and rescue children outside Australia. It is um, mentally, psychologically, emotionally, physically, spiritually. It's 
exhausting and it's daunting and it is something that no human should be able to see. You know, you've got children, you know, chained up and locked up in cages, you know, being treated like not even, you know, animals. And so, um, yeah, so when the raid happens, they barge in. Most of the times it's when they're asleep um, because that's when they least expect, they least expect it. Um, but some of these perpetrators know who these rescuers are and what they do is they photocopy their photos and pin them all over the suburbs saying, if you see any of these people clear away, they're here to rescue children. So they're getting tipped off. And so these child traffickers know that, hey, I just saw this person up the road. Let's take these 50 children that we've got now and take them to a different town altogether. So they're quite, sh they're quite smart. You know, they're not just your background traffickers. They are, mm. they are educated. They are quick. They are proactive, and they're evil. And they will do anything for for money. They mm. will do anything. You've got families selling off their own children for it, and it it just breaks your heart because as a mother, I would rather. Put myself on the line, than even have anyone touch just one piece of hair off my child. So it's yeah. it's really scary, um, it, you know. And once they get rescued, um, the team has a a program for healing because these children, and it's not just women, it's not just little girls, it's also boys as well. And you're looking at as young as sometimes one and a half shoves. Like it, it just blows my mind. What do you do with a one and a half year old? How could you possibly even? This is where, when you get into that age gap, you think these people can no longer be human because you cannot be human and do this to a little child. Mm. You know, um, I, I don't say this much, but I was abused when I was younger. Um, yeah. uh, when was it? Seven, 17, 18? And it was someone from the entertainment industry. And then I tried to take my life as a child, as a, mm -hmm. as a young adult. Understandable, uh, understandable. It, it wasn't just because of that what happened. It was my upbringing. Uh, it was just a lot of pressure as, as a little, as an 18-year-old. Um, so I, I wasn't as close to God as I was, as I am now. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I was just on my own. So when I had all of that happen to me, I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I just want to rest. Uh, it's too hard. Yes. And so I, I, I gave up. I was like, I give up. Uh, I don't want to be here anymore. I do not want to exist. Um, but as I said, by the grace of God, um, I was okay. And, and I also advocate for, um, for a lot of people with suicide conditions as well you know and using God's word to be able to get them to be healed because you know I also do you know I was also part of a swag organization which is salvation with almighty God and we would feed all the homeless people in Sydney I would mm -hmm. go to the train stations and we'd feed them we'd clothe them we'd put them in shelter put them up in hotels and they are the most beautiful souls they are 100%. so so There's some cool, cool ones, man. Yeah, I was I was, I, I was a street kid for a bit. I lived on the streets for a little bit in uh, as, as a teenager and stuff. And yeah, definitely some of the coolest people I've ever met. Even traveling the world, I definitely encountered a lot of cool people on the streets. Like uh, mm. you know, sometimes you know, just got the wrong end of the stick, or maybe sometimes they just chose because it was better to be out there than where they were you know what i mean so but some of the coolest stories i've ever heard are from some people that are in the streets you know wherever i go I always try and get a meal with somebody that's sit down and have a yarn it's always good for sure yeah, um absolutely. and what you said too resonates too I, I, like all of the stuff is sort of it's obviously quite raw and shocking but it, it's it's good to speak on because yeah i was uh, abused as a child too it's like as an actual child you know like probably like three, four years old, like from my earliest memories till like six, seven, you know what I mean? Like, so, and I speak about that openly. I speak about it openly because I think the perpetrators want us to be quiet and the more we be quiet, the more they get to perpetrate. So I think speaking on it is good, good for the soul too. It's healing. Um, 100%, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
Yeah. And what I've learned about that experience is I I forgave. Not that they asked for forgiveness. Mm. Most perpetrators don't ask for forgiveness. Most of them don't ask. You know, I forgive a lot because it's forgiveness is the best gift I give myself. Because once you be able to forgive, you, you can let go of all of that pain and then you can start healing. Because you cannot heal with a resentful heart. You cannot heal with a heart with unforgiveness. And so in order for me, Sonia, to heal, I needed to forgive. And so mm. it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But it's it. When you are able to forgive someone, Shubs, you be able to witness to other people with more of a conviction. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm holding on to a lot of resentment and hatred and I'm talking to someone that was abused and I'm like, yep, I don't blame you, yep, keep hating, keep hating. I'm fueling into, I'm fueling into, um, into their animosity. I'm fueling into their memories rather than approaching it differently because it's amazing how you speak to people um, and because I'm involved in a lot of charities and a lot of awareness, you've got to be very, very careful how you speak to people and what you say. And They, they cling on to your word and um, a lot of people have lost hope in life, lost hope. Um, and so as a survivor, as you and myself, um, mm. I look at that and I turn it around and I think, okay, how can I use that for someone else to benefit? You gain, you gain, you gain strength and you gain wisdom and you gain so much when you are able to put it behind you. And when you are putting it behind you, you're, you're more able and more inclined to, to help people much better with a forgiving heart. That's me though. I know everyone's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And yeah, no, no, <laughs> definitely. Like, like, I, I've, I've definitely not let it. I, I, don't, I don't think I've, uh, personally, I don't think I forgave at all. But I, th I don't hold on to it. So maybe I don't know if that is forgiving or not. But yeah, I don't like. I'm, I just use it to, you know, uh, speak on it to try and strengthen other people to speak out. But yeah, I don't. I don't know if I've forgiven them, but I don't. I don't like I don't, I don't I'm not like sad about it at all. Like it's sad when you hear 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 what happens to other people, but I just use it to you know. Now that I have children, like whenever they like if there's like alcohol or stuff around, it doesn't. Well, one they don't really have that around them anyway, and just not really. Um, like I never let anybody really babysit them for at all, and like only their grandparents, and that's it. Like you know, like their mother and I. That was sort of what we both agreed you know what i mean and my parents would uh, my, my my mother would too but she's not here you know what i mean she lives in in queensland so yeah that'll be probably it but and like every time there's because i used to drink a bit but like no well, i don't anymore really hardly hardly ever but i used to call it like you know big drinking culture growing up back home mm -hmm. and stuff and big drinking culture here in australia but um whenever there's drinking around not even my kids even before i had kids whenever there's kids around i'd always like make sure they're like always like even if i was drinking i'll always watch to see like if all the kids were all in like all together and make sure like they're just i don't know subconsciously because i know like people be like oh yeah but that's your uncle but this is usually how it happens it's the closest ones they get to you a lot of the time especially as children because they're the ones that have the most access you know I mean, sometimes right. fathers fucking so yeah i definitely I wouldn't say that I've forgiven them because I don't like, yeah, I, I don't know. I personally believe I don't have to. Like, you know what I mean? I've let it go. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm not I'm not burdened by it. I use it as strength to, you know, speak to others and also to know that I want to be the antithesis of what I grew up with. But yeah, I don't know. I couldn't say that I could forgive somebody. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I have. Maybe letting go is forgiveness, but yeah, I've never said I forgive you in my heart at all. But I don't hold anything there either. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so maybe I have, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. But being able to let go of something traumatizing is, is hard as well because mm. yeah, you, you tend to remember the things that happened to you. And, you know, every now and then, you know, things cross my mind about the past. 
And I'm like, no, you're you're in the past for a reason, and I'm just going to bury it and just move on because, Sonia, you've got this work to do, and you cannot move forward when you've got the baggage um, over over your head. So, it is quite difficult. Um, you know, I, I look at it with child trafficking. When I first watched a raid, and when I first knew about it, I cried and cried and cried five, six years ago because I thought I didn't I didn't understand the extent of it until I actually watched it, and I thought. My goodness. So I mourned and I grieved and I was like, why? Why is this happening? How could this happen? But then after I, I got rid of all of that in my heart and I cried, mm -hmm. something strengthened me. And it's like, okay, I, God strengthening me, saying, all right, my child, now that you've mourned, now that you've cried, now that you saw what happens, now I'm going to put you to work. And he's, he's hardened and strengthened my heart. So if I was to see something, 100%, you, you would, you'd get angry. It hurts you. But you now have a mission now. Before it was you grieved without a mission. Now I know what my mission is. Yeah, I know what my mission is. You know, we're all here to make a difference, whatever difference it is, whether it's big or small. You know, if all of us just did one step towards humanity, the dent in this planet would be unrecognisable. But there are so many people that um, that are scared to face it. Child trafficking? No, I don't want to know about it, Sonia. You know how many people shoves I have spoken to? No, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know about it, which is okay. But this is where the awareness comes involved because you're, you won't know that there's a groomer right next to you because you mm. shut your mind. And so I speak to my children. I said, if this ever happens, if any of your school teachers speak this way, if anyone on social media approaches you this way, you know what to do, you know what to say. So praise God, my, my kids are, are quite educated and they're quite alert and they can discern what's not right. You know, my son, 16 years of age, you know, you know he, he plays Sony, you know, he's a cool kid. So he was on a, a game and some man came in and started talking to him, um, you know, through the PlayStation. And straight away he muted it and he called me and he said, Mum, come watch this. And so I recorded the whole thing, Shubs, the whole thing. Um, what was he saying to the guy? He was just saying, so where are you from? My, my son didn't give any details. He said, oh, I'm just here to play the game. No, you play really good. I want to know how well you do in real life. Like just, just things that were were creepy. Um, anyway, I try to take to someone, and I'm still waiting for a result to see who's behind it because you can track these people down. Um, so I recorded the whole thing, um, and then he said, um, "You play really good. I can only imagine how much better you could play in real life. Um, I've been watching you for a few months, and you and your score had just, just things that." not a player that's interested in the game would continue to to brag on about so um the only thing that i ended up finding out is that he was a 50 year eight, 50 year eight, 58 year old male um where he's from don't know yet but i don't take these things lightly because i've got a 60 year old grooming a 16 year old and asking questions so to all the parents out there <laughs> make sure you, you watch what your kids are watching and and make sure you know who they're talking to like my little girl she's 12 no, just turned 13 and she wanted snapchat even though she just uses it for the stupid little and the funny filters that they have and she just takes photos it's just it's quite funny but i monitor i have access to all of their accounts i see what comes up anything that there if there's a movement towards you know, a comment that's out of line you know i get sent that you know, and it, it's very, very important that parents know what their kids are watching. I don't mean invade their privacy. I don't invade their privacy, but I am a concerned mother, and I have a right to be because I've been, in this industry. I've been in this industry. I know what happens behind the scenes. I know the talk and the language that people use. I, I, I hear it. I see it. And so when I see that to my 16-year-old son, that my son could be six years of age, and he could have told him where he lived. He could have said to him, yes, I'm in Sydney. This is the suburb I live in. This is my street number. This is my address. Children are vulnerable and actually clueless, Shubs, because parents do not educate their kids. And this is why Proverbs 
22.6 is so important to me is that you need to raise your children to me in God's word because it opens their eyes. Yeah. Opens their eyes. Interesting. Yeah. And I, I love the passion that you have, you know, because, you, you know, for you're a very, like, kind and caring soul and, you know what I mean? But when it comes to this, you're just full. Yeah. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, Keep being I'm that way. Yeah, eight hundred percent warrior for sure. <laughs> One hundred, <laughs> definitely. I I grew from being a warrior, as in I worried a lot, to a, mm. a warrior putting my, God's armor on. So the warrior. Mm. Yeah. Shout so. out to God's armor, then. Eh? Let's go. Amen. Shout out to Amen. the warrior. <laughs> <laughs> It's there. So Destiny, Destiny Rescue, is that your charity? How does is, what, is Destiny Rescue your charity or no? It's organization? not. It's not. No, not my charity. It's a uh, organization that rescues children from sexual exploitation, human trafficking. Okay. That came to my church and it just spoke to my heart. And so mm. they've. I don't work with them. I work alongside them. So um, I ended up after the one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars that I raised for them. Um, they continued to raise another 80, 80 or 90,000 afterwards through my events. So all up, it's almost $260,000. So um, I am now having a meeting with an organisation this Thursday for an organisation that's here in Sydney that deals with children that have come out of trafficking. So this is now educating and healing these women, these children. Mm. So that's... Uh, exciting. I haven't mentioned it anywhere, so you've got it first up, Shelves. So, um, so this Thursday, um, I'm pleased. Yeah, I'm pleased to say that I have a meeting with the founder of an organisation that takes care of once these children and women are rescued. Now it's all yep. about in integrating, integrating, integrating them back into society and educating them so, yeah, they can rebuild their lives. I think that's a that's an important part, right? I, I spoke on this with a few people on here, uh, a few legends about even just war, right? War, because um, it was Anzac Day just recently, and a lot of people, like you know, the the effects of war. A lot of people think of obviously the lands that they perpetrated on, the deaths, the inhumane acts, but war, the ripple effects of war go far beyond then like the people that come home, like you say, reintegration back into society. I've seen some stats that uh, in World War One to World War Two, PTSD rose like considerably like between those two wars and the only real difference like that they could, or, you know, I guess uh, causation they could find is that in World War One, planes weren't really... Well, you know, you weren't able to get on a plane and go home quicker, you know what I mean? So, whereas World War II, this planes got a bit better and technology had advanced a lot more, so people could get home a lot swifter. So, they didn't have to sit with their fellow men or women that experienced what they experienced, which were more likely to share with each other and get it off their chest than they did in World War II. So, a lot of them were reintegrated back into society a lot quicker. And then, you know, obviously, a lot of like I, I, I know generations of uh, people or that I grew up around, uh, whose grandfathers were, you know, veterans, uh, you know, of different campaigns in World War Two, or even World War what, and and just like it absolutely decimated their family. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like the 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 guy was never the same, and you know, just treated everyone differently. Not always, but a lot of times. Yeah, I know a lot of people that were mm. that way. So I think reintegration back into society is key because. Yeah, you can save the child or whatever, you know, maybe they're an adult now, uh, yes. the trafficked human, but after they're getting them back to society, you, you, it's like a, it's like having a lion in the, <laughs> having a lion in a cage and then putting it in the wild, like a lot of time they don't survive, you know what I mean? Because they they've been given meat, they don't have to go yeah. and hunt. You know what I mean? All that yeah. kind of stuff, you know. And what what happens with that shoves is that if they're not educated, they're just gonna go back to what they got saved from. Because that's all mm. that they know. Because yes. a lot of yeah, because a lot of these these children and even young women, when they are rescued, uh, Destiny Rescue don't just give them back to the family. They don't just give them back to a fostering agency or an adoption agency or to the police. They they start from scratch. They resurface everything that they've gone through. They talk about what they've gone through because 
if you speak of it, you heal of it. Because you cannot heal if you if you if you're keeping it in silence. So what these what they do is they actually get a pillow and they give it to all the victims. And this is a training method that they use um, for psychology. And they pretend that the person that trafficked you and hurt you is that pillow. Do whatever you want to that pillow. Do whatever you want. So I've seen these girls from as young as 14 to as, sorry, no, not as young as 14. The eldest is 14. The youngest is seven, all being given a pillow. And the longer that they were trafficked, the bigger the pillow is. If they were there for a month or two, the smaller the pillow is because um, of their time there. So what they do is they give the pillow, do whatever you want with it. Some of them hug it and cry. Some of them scream, shout, rip it open, go crazy, kick it, throw it. Some of them just put it aside and just turn away. The ones that turn away, shoves, and that don't do anything, they're the ones you've got to keep an eye out on because they're avoiding mm. what happened to them. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so therefore they're not going to heal because they, they don't want to remember, which is, which is okay. But sooner or later, in order for them to heal and to progress and to move forward and to rebuild your life, you need to face you need to face what happened. As 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 painful as it is, deal with it now, bit by bit, so it doesn't kill you later. And so the ones that turn around are the ones that um, you got to keep close attention to because they're not expressing the way they feel. They're not venting. Like if you're angry and you're frustrated. When you scream and shout and let loose, even though it may not change anything, you're getting it you, out. You feel better. I mean, I do. Sometimes I, I'm at home and I get frustrated and I just scream. I was like, huh, that did a, a world of good. You know, yeah. Um, these, yeah, so it's quite sad to see. But um, yeah, so as soon as they go through an intense program of healing and restoration, that's mm. when they. Uh, to move forward they send them out to the workforce they send them yeah. out you know to studies and they educate them saying if this ever happens and if you see a man or a woman and most of these women are involved equally as these men so it's not just the men that that do this it, it's the women because the women are displayed as motherly so a lot of people wouldn't think that a woman would do that because that's her nature kind and compassionate and loving you wouldn't expect a mother or a female to do that. But there are a lot of mothers and grandmothers do it to their own children, which is quite sad. Mm. So Crafty was saying she's a, um, she's a retired uh, veteran, uh, served in Iraq, and she's like also, she's American, but she, in, like there's a lot of things she also obviously understands a lot of stuff wasn't right. But also says that, yeah, reintegrating back into society is so hard and from coming back from war um and a lot of stuff that people go through in war a lot of similar stuff or the the, the way the the brain and and the, the way the soul reacts to the trauma is similar to a lot of the stuff that these children endure too so mm -hmm. yeah um yeah and, she, and and also sort of agreeing on what you said that yeah it's a, you're just blocking out instead of actually dealing with the problem when you turn around so Hundred yeah. percent. There's there's also something else I wanted to let you know, and you know your your viewers know also. Sorry, let me just decline that call. Okay. Um, lots of children with special needs are worth more in the child trafficking industry. Really? Yeah, because they can't express, they can't speak. Whether it's Down syndrome. Oh, or just, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going to be telling nobody. Likely, the likelihood of them ever telling anyone is, you know, pretty, pretty minute. Because a lot of the children that aren't typically developed will think it's game playing, that it's love, that it's affection. They won't. They won't know. Most of them don't know. And so, when you have a child, say like Christian, my son, he's twelve mm. years of age, he's got Down syndrome. He's um, uh medium so he's he's not really really in the spectrum uh, i mean you can have a conversation with him um like he'll say mum i want water mum i am hungry so he can communicate and he can put mm -hmm. a sentence together 
but I am thinking if someone wants to do something to him, would he? how would he look at that? And when I found out that these children are worth more, I actually thought if someone, God forbid, did that to Christian, what would he do? Because I look at my other two, they automatically would fight, would run away, would scream, mm -hmm. would shout, will resist, will bite, will, kick, will, will defend themselves. But yep. with a tip, but with any any child with with a disability or with special needs, you think mm -hmm. how do you react? And now I get it that they may not react. They may think it's okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Not. So it's um it's even more evil. You know, Fuck it's sad, but it makes sense one hundred. They're very calculating, very very calculating. But the thing is, shoves that. I don't defend pedophiles. I don't defend child traffickers. I don't defend people that sacrifice children because no one just wakes up becoming a pedophile. No one just wakes up and becomes a murderer or a rapist. There is clearly something that happened in that person's life that got them to that, that train of thought. You cannot just wake up with this different personality. So you got to go back to how was this person treated and brought up as a child? 80, 90% of the time, they've been abused. Oh, so of course, of course, of course, 100%. So, so it's this generational curse that needs to be broken. And it's yeah, just gener yeah. generation because they were hurt. How do they deal with it? Hurting others because hurt people, yeah. hurt, people hurt people. That's yeah, what they no, but I, I I agree with this 100. percent Like even with uh, like things like you know I, I know like a, like a lot of it's not the only but like a lot of Catholic churches it's, it's widely known that there's a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of cover ups but there's a lot of child abuse that happens it's you know everybody like anybody that's got a brain and understands that this happens quite a lot but even in other I guess in other maybe. Uh, uh, the nominations as well, but I know it's it's rife throughout there. You know, even to the point where um, I don't know what that that their last pope they had, he pretty much moved the dude that they touched like ninety deaf kids or whatever they were. You know what I mean? They, that kind of stuff is is rife. But I sort of understand why it happens. I would never, you know what I mean? I never like think like that's okay. But you understand what happens when, like you know, like if they've been in the same system and they've been touched, and then they become the you know. They become the leader or whatever it is, you know, makes sense why they would happen. And or even yeah, but I still think you're a scumbag anyway. But yeah, like regardless, but I, you understand how, how it does how it does come mm -hmm. about. And it's you know, I think a lot of interventions, like you know, just healing healing the home first would be good, eh? Like, you know, getting getting to the the parents early, you know what I mean? Like educating them. And it's sad that a lot of people turn you away and go, I don't want to hear about that, Sonia, because in doing that, especially if they're parents, you know, or even if they're not parents, they're probably uncles or aunties or something, you know what I mean? Or they were a child once, you know what I mean? It's, it sucks because the more people push it away, the the, the less of a light it can be can be shone, shone on it. And then we need as much light shone on it as possible, you know, to make people aware, right? Just as much like, uh, just as much as people like, uh, you know, Taylor Swift get, you know, people buzz out on like a Taylor Swift, you know, concert, and they, we need that kind of those kind of eyeballs on this kind of stuff. But of course, you mm -hmm. know, that's all a distraction. We understand that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, it just sucks. But it's 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 powerful what you do, Sonia, and and all the people in that in that industry. Like, I'm glad that I can, you know, hopefully this little podcast that I'm building one day can, you know, help it as well. You know. Um, yeah. yeah, but definitely said, but yeah, you're right. Like a lot of people, like a famous one is like R. Kelly, for example. You know, he he was into a lot of teenage girls, and then come to find out his stepsister molested him when he was a when she was a teenager. So like the the, the you know the the understanding why like the why that was his kind of flavor. It's like you know mm. even things like like people even like R Kelly for example people will mock R Kelly which is fine like hundred percent do your thing but then they'll also put Elvis on a pedestal but for me like Priscilla Presley was fucking fourteen like that's not good you know what I mean I don't know, people say oh it was more accepted back in those days no it's, I don't give a fuck that's the yuck bro you know what I mean yeah I yeah. I, I a lot of that you know because um, I look at 
<laughs> a lot of people think she's she's developed they look on the outside she may be physically developed she's fine but the thing is emotionally and and, and psychologically how is a 14 year old ready for marriage how is she able to open a home serve a man submit to a man be sexual with the man um where she should be what's what's a 14 year old you're eight let something kids, like that yeah let, and, and i hear so many people and I hear so many people say, Sonia, but back those back in those days are different. Like for instance, you know, um, I, I'm big on. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I I read a lot of different other faiths. You know, I'm a Christian woman, and I look into a lot of other faiths. And there's a faith uh, in particular where their own prophet married a six year old, and he didn't consummate the marriage till nine. Now, I look at that and I think that's a six-year-old girl, but a lot of people defend that and say, back in those days, it's different. Back in those days, a six-year-old seems normal, you know, it's, it's of, a, of a normal age. To me, Shuns, a six-year-old a million years ago is the same six-year-old today. A six-year-old 4,000 years ago is a six-year-old today. So irrespective of what era, what generation, what year we are in, a six-year-old is a six-year-old from the day go to the day end. So there is no excuse. So anyone that wants to defend that, you are so wrong. And I've had a lot of debates with people and mm -hmm. it's, it's more not against the faith, it's against, it's against the act because I came from a Catholic background. You know, I okay. grew up Catholic. And then five years ago, I became a born again Christian. So I denounce Catholicism. Mm. And a lot of people say, Sonia, what's the difference between Catholicism and being a born again Christian? When I was Catholic, it was Bible plus man made doctrines. With being a born again Christian, it is purely Bible based. No man made, no man -made doctrines. You know, God says, do not add, do not take. That's it. My word should suffice. So there's the difference. So um, when I see something that needs to be exposed, I don't care what race it is, what faith it is, what status they are, whoever it is. When it needs to be out and put into the light, I'll place that light and I'll make sure that there are millions of other lights, which is like-minded people, that will... I'm very much a truth teller and sometimes that hurts people, sometimes it offends people but to me the truth is the truth and it's if, if the truth is bothering you or the truth is offending someone then you need to analyse your heart and say why does this bother me so much? If this is the truth why does it burn me so much when, when Sonia says that or when this one says that? It, it's, it's hard hearing the truth but as I said the truth will set you free. Look at the truth that's happening, that's getting exposed about COVID, these celebrities, child trafficking. It's the truth. If you want to accept it's happening, great. If not, then may one day that you do wake up and realise it does happen. So mm. that one truth, I'm all about truth. I am not here to, to make people feel good based on a lie just so it might make them comfortable. If it's going to make you uncomfortable, then so be it. At least you've got the truth. That's yeah, how I well, just comforts how we grow, right? We don't grow when we're comfortable. Uh, yeah. No, no, you, you speak your truth. You you, you say that you say them things, and and yeah, uh, I just I just enjoy like listening to all the stuff that you're doing. It's uh, it's empowering to you know hopefully other parents can or even just other humans in general can hear it and say, well, I want to be a part of what this lady's doing. Well, how, how do they, do they just type you up on socials? Like if they want to support any of your causes or anything like that, what do they do? Um, I, I have an Instagram page um, and Facebook as well. Um, I have now released myself from the organisations. Um, okay. Now I'm facing, I'm, I'm 
maybe aligning myself with one this week. Um, I, I make sure I spend a lot of time researching who these agencies are because if I are they untrustworthy? You're saying, what, 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 like, like, are you saying that other people shouldn't like align with actually, those organizations? There are so many organizations that they say we're here to rescue children, but they're the ones that actually put these children in the hands of the elite. So you, not everyone that says we're here to rescue children. Well, of course. Uh, Wolf and sheep's uh, clothing, huh? A hundred percent. That's a verse in the Bible. Did you know that? I know. I know. <laughs> so you got to be careful. I It took me eight months to research Destiny Rescue. Seven, eight months. I wanted to yeah. make sure that my money, because, you know, $10,000 is a lot of money for yeah. me just to give it to someone I don't know. So I made sure I knew who are your agents, what do you represent, uh, why do you do it, who's the CEO, who's the founder, how did this get funded, how did this get yes. founded, how did this happen. You need to know, and whether you're putting 10000 or 100000 or even $10, it's irrespective of the amount of money. It is truly based on are these people legit, are they real? And you've got to be very careful because there are a lot of scammers out there. A lot of organizations that will fall under the umbrella of we're a Christian based organization, Christian based, we're a godly based organization. And that's how they get people because people attract themselves to faith. And when they hear it's a godly organization, it's a faithful organization, they got real Christians or, you know, these Muslims or these Hindus or these Buddhists or, you know, they, they're aligned with God. They must be godly. But mm. like you said, there are many wolves in sheep's clothing and this is where you need to be wise and discern and do your research and know who you are aligning yourself with. Um, I'm just a little tadpole in a massive ocean. I'm, I'm nothing at all. Oh, well, if you but, think about it, we were all once tadpoles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm nothing special. I'm not big in the industry, but whoever... Um, my, you know, my followers are my beautiful people that, you know, hear what I say and and want to jump on board. I want to make sure that I'm giving them the right information because if I don't and they follow and they fund a raid and they, it ends up being not legit, I feel terrible. So mm. anyone that wants to align themselves with any organisation, make sure you research first. Do not believe face value. Do not believe. Ask for their budgets. That's what I do. Show me your budgets. Be transparent. I want to see all your financials. You have to. If you're going to invest your money, you want to know where it's going. 100%. You want to know where it's going. It's not you being tight with money. It's you being smart with your money. Totally different. Yeah. And just making sure it's going to exactly we what you believe it should and that it's going to be used in the right way. Even, like, yeah. any there's so many charities out there. And, like, you know yeah. I mean? Like, the... Like there's these are like these red crosses in there, and a lot of people are like, oh, I just donated to the Red Cross, bro. I didn't even know what, you know, didn't even know much. Like you know, have you researched them? Do you know that you just pretty much use there's a funnel to like and launder money and just fucking you know keep the rich rich, baby. You know what I mean? You know a lot of their stuff. Like come on. You know, just be giving your money willy nilly to the Red Cross um, or whatever. You know, whatever the organization is. So. But anyway, so in doing that, you did that research, but now you're not aligned with them. Is it? What's the reasoning behind that? Um, not that I'm aligned with them. I still support what they do. Um, okay. I had just been given other opportunities elsewhere to oh, okay. to move forward. I'm still so I'm still part of the organisation. I just don't hold the garlands, you know. Um, but I still refer right. a lot of people to. Yeah, there's a rescuer there that I'm very close with. He's a real life rescuer. Um, yep. And he's actually possibly jumping on board with my film because my film is about child trafficking. Well, and so cool. I need, yeah, so I need his insight, like, hey, um, give me the updated stats or I need to know what happens here. How do you do this? How do you do that? Um, I want my film to be as authentic as possible. I want it to be based on the truth, not on fabrication, not on mm. an idea not on a suggestion. I want it to be based on hardcore truth. Um, so the thing is with child trafficking, there's no point raising awareness of anything if there's no solution. So Proverbs 22.6, not, not only is about Jesus Christ and how Jesus can redeem the most wicked, 
and that he's merciful and he's forgiving. It's also, like I said, government corruption and as well as bringing up awareness of child trafficking, but also equaling it to a solution. There's no point in bringing awareness if there's no solution. So yeah, Proverbs will bring solutions to how to keep your eye open, your ears open, your mouth open, speak when you see something. A lot of people don't yeah. shove. A lot of people see things and just walk away because they don't want to get involved. It's too yeah, hard. Like you spoke about before. It's, it's not I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, or I don't want to know about it, or it doesn't involve me, or don't get me involved. No, I'm sorry. Um, when you see a child getting abused, uh, if you do not help that child, you might as well just become the abuser. 100%. I'm with you on that. Well said, well said. 100. 100%. For anybody that do, if they if they want to align with uh, Destiny Rescue, would you say yeah, good spot to start or yeah de definitely yeah Destiny Rescue are a good organization but okay. still do your own research yeah let's go baby do your own do research your buggers right don't just rely on Sonia a lot of people say to me Sonia you know I've seen this organization what do you think and I would go over the organization you know their mission statements not just Destiny Rescue other organizations yeah, yeah whoever yeah and I and I would tell them from my point of view it looks a bit sus, it looks a bit dodgy, or it looks legit, but you go do your own. Do not do not base your decision on my decision. Mm. You do what, what you feel convicted with, what, where you feel your heart is at, mm. um, pray on. And I pray on everything. I don't move forward without praying because I want I want guidance from my my God because I don't want to lean on my own understanding. Because we can fall in a lot of trouble when you do that. When you lean on your own understanding and you think you know it all and that pride creeps up, you can get it wrong. And so I've done that myself. I've just done things on my own accord, forgot to ask my Heavenly Father, and then I fall. And it's like, wow, if only I had asked you because God sees, he's an all-knowing God. He's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow and he sees things more than I do. I may see three, four metres in front of me, but he sees a lifetime in front of me and I don't. So I ask him, is this the way you want me to go? Is this what you want me to do? If I... How does the bird answer? I'm sorry? How does the bird answer? How does... How does he answer? You said you ask him, but how does he answer oh, you? How does he answer? He speaks through people. Ooh. He, I could be reading something and it could be relating to what I'm saying. I could dream of something and it answers me. Um, the thing is, I with Proverbs 22, 6, financially I had the funds to do it, and I, yeah. but I didn't want to touch my own funds. I thought... If this is not going to go so well, I don't want to risk it. I'm on my own with the three children. Do I do it? Do I not? And so I asked the Lord and I said, Lord, I want to do this because I want you to be glorified. See, my Lord is Jesus Christ. He's my God. So I speak to Jesus and I speak to him not in a formal way. I speak to him like you and I do, like casually and I laugh and I joke and I have a sense of humour. And so I speak to him and I said, if this is the direction that you want me to go in, if this is what you want me to do, can you please provide an investor for me? Because I want, I want to do this. I want, I want to use my knowledge and I want to use the gifts and the talents that you've given me and I want to do this um, to glorify you and to set people free and to also wake people up. If you don't want me to do this, give me some sort of a sign. But if you do, can you get an investor to come forward? Mm. Four weeks later, I got an investor and he funded my whole film. And so I looked up and I said, thank you. He speaks to you. You know when he speaks to you. And it's not about you asking God for things. It's not about just asking. When he knows your heart is genuine, he will provide you. When he knows your heart is clean and there's no agendas, that there's no other agenda, but him and but the truth, he'll open doors for you. He'll open doors for you. 
and yeah. yeah sounds yeah. beautiful and, and love the conviction you have in you know in your beliefs but in your mahi and your work it's uh yeah, solid before we go I, i've got a few questions but i i just want to ask what is it that a film producer does if someone asks you that question what would that a film from what you see on the big screen Mm -hmm. is what a producer does from casting from financing it from yeah. um, putting wardrobe together i mean it's you know the catering the legal costs all the contracts um location uh, advisory um it is organizing your crew doing background checks on all your crew and all your cast um it is also making sure that uh, there's no scandals with your cast and crew because the last thing you want is to have someone on set that's got a scandal and then it's going to affect your production um it's all about you know um logistics you know it's all about you know budgets it's it's a lot it's catering it, it's as small as catering to as to as large as your cast and crew it's pretty much putting a oh, whole film together. putting the pretty film much. together yeah bringing everyone oh. in the building oh. and then as soon as you're on set you can relax because then I leave and my director comes on board and starts and he starts directing. How do you do work? So what's yeah, um when so when we see things like executive produced by what does exact mean? Funded. Oh okay. <laughs> okay. Some, some producers so, also you've got line producers, you've got executive producers, you've got normal producers. There's so many terms and I think it's all a whole lot of rubbish to be honest. A lot of people invest, a lot of producers don't invest, a lot of myself I invest in my own work and I have a lot of people that are creators and say Sonia, we will pay you, can you produce my film? Mm -hmm. And so I give them my rates and they say yes or no and that's it. So um but pretty much producers do everything that you see on on screen apart from, you know, the editing and and directing. So it's taking right. care of cast and crew and the legal stuff and the logistics of the whole film. Yeah. Uh if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, which one do you choose and why? One meal. Oh. Mm. So you're talking to a Middle Eastern person that loves her food. And we have to choose one one of those one of those dishes that you want for the rest of your life. Barbecue. Barbecue. We do the the chicken and the kifta and the lamb, and yes. we do the tabbouleh <laughs> with the the baba ganoush. But that's a whole big thing. But one dish, my goodness, yeah. it's an Arabic dish. It's yeah. called it's called magluba. Magluba mm -hmm. in in English means upside down. So okay. you cook everything in the pot. So it's your yeah. lamb, it's your cauliflower, and then it's your rice. And then once it's all cooked, you flip it over onto a big dish and you put yogurt on it and some chili. It doesn't sound divine, but it is beautiful. Ooh, sounds it. right. What's it called again? <laughs> Magluba. Magluba. So Magluba. Magluba. Yeah, that's it. You got it. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever come oh, to yeah. Sydney, if you ever come to Sydney, I'll make that for you. All right, sounds good, Maglumba. Okay, let's go. Um, if you could have one superpower besides the ones you already have, which one would you choose and why? Maybe even create one. To be invisible. Ooh. Yeah. To see what a lot of people are up to so you can stop what they're going to do. Wow, I like that. Be invisible. I've had that since I was the age of 10. The age of 10. Since I was a little, yeah, well, little I heard girl. That. you didn't even start out on that. You just to be invisible. Boom. You <laughs> just stay away. No, the no, food wants to be a while. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, if someone was to uh, do a biopic on you, uh, who would you want to be in the film as you? Could be anyone from life, someone, you know, whatever. If someone was to do a biopic a, of Sonia Kuitami, who, who who would we who, who would do who would be you who would play you in the film? That's a hard one. 
Yeah, he's a hard one. That's a hard one. Hmm. So, who would my role relate to? Pretty much. No, no. Who, who, well, what? It, who would you? What, who would you like to play you? Who would you like to play you in your own biopic? Deceased or even alive doesn't really matter. Deceased or alive, yeah. You choose. You choose. This is your your person. Princess Diana. Princess Diana. Wow. She's as authentic and as raw and as pure. And she was just, yeah. She's just. She's a good woman. She's. She holds her values quite dearly, and she's dignified. And she's honourable, mm. and they're the, they're the traits that I look for with everyone on the set. Diana Al Fayed, well, could have been, but yeah, didn't end up being obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, I love for this Diana. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, uh, uh, last one though, I, I got go one more for you. Actually, I got two. I'll go uh, visualization ten years from now. What's life like for Sonia? I would like to build a massive home for all the children that I fostered that jump from home to home because there are so many children that keep being bounced around for years and years and years. That confuses children because every child that comes into my care, they call me mum and then they go to somewhere else and they call them mum. They don't have the stability of, of someone. So I would love to open up a beautiful home, not a house, a home mm -hmm. with in-house people that can raise these children and they are the same children yesterday, today and tomorrow as opposed to being thrown around. So pretty much a residence for these children that they can call home rather than picking up their bags and going to millions of homes that they can reside in this one place. That's what I would love to do. It's beautiful. Any advice for people that want to get into the work that you do in the film and uh, with the the child stuff, uh, yeah, fostering, any advice for all those three? Just, just give one piece for each or one across the board. Uh, fostering, make sure that you know what it takes to foster a child. You are bringing in a child that comes from a place of whether it's drug abuse um, or alcohol, whatever it may be. Just be very patient, be very understanding. Make sure that you, you've got what it takes. Um, the last thing you want to do is look after a child and say this is too much and give the child back because that will really screw up that child. That will really affect that child saying, I'm not even welcomed here. So make sure that you are ready wholeheartedly, that you can get wholeheartedly because I'm a woman of my word. And so if I make a decision about something, I stick to my word. So remain to your word when it comes to fostering. To child trafficking, do your research i cannot express do your research and when you go research and you want to get on board a child trafficking organization make sure that you have a strong heart to be able to see and hear what's yet to come because you are not of any benefit with a weak heart someone that's weak in heart and i don't mean compassionate totally too different i'm still strong in heart but i'm compassionate but i don't have a weak heart it's like you want to become a surgeon, but you can't see blood. You gotta, you, you can't have a weak heart when it comes to that. So you've got to be able to withhold. You've got to be able to to understand what you're going to see. Because if you're going to go into this, you've got to make sure that you are strong in your mind, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. Because if you're not, you're no good. You need to be able to have a strong heart. Compassionate is always there, but just have a strong heart. Um, for filming, be very careful who you align yourself with. Ooh. Film directors and producers are shonky, are dirty, are evil, have only one agenda. It's either to screw you over somehow, to get you in bed, to make you do things that you do not do, to make you do things that you that your principles and your convictions go against. I put a video out on my social media yesterday. I have a lot of 
parents asking me, Sonia, I want to get my child in this genre just to get my child out there. You are throwing your you're throwing your blessings into fire just so that they can get a name. What's going to happen to these children is they're going to be going and being sexual with all of these directors in order to get a name, to get into a, a gig, to get into a film, to get on set. You do not want to do that. You want to be merited for your talents, not for how easy you are. So if you are a parent or if you're a young adult wanting to get into the industry, have self-respect. Self-respect in the filming industry is the least thing that is admirable. There is no self-respect in Hollywood. Sorry, just kidding. Keep in these calls. Have self-respect. Research the production house that you're getting involved in. Make sure that you know that they come from good values. I mean, you could be on set. I've been on set with someone that worshipped Satan. I didn't know that until I was on set. And my spirit and his spirit, my goodness, it clashed. You can tell. He did his work. I gave him the word of God and he just ran as fast as anything. Just be very careful who you're on set with. Do not trust everyone. Make sure you read your contracts. Mm. Do not move forward unless you are a thousand percent sure because the filming industry isn't as glamorous as you think it is. It's not as glamorous. It's quite dirty. So just be very, very careful. Mm. Awesome. Hey, I just want to say, Sonia, time is the most valuable commodity we have as human beings. The one thing we can never get back. We can always get back things, money, but we can never get back time. Time spent is time lost. So thank you for sp you. sharing over an hour of your time with myself and everybody that listens to this for years to come on whatever platform. Um, yeah, appreciate you. And I hope wherever the journey takes you, you, you go as, as far as you can and you do as much as you can and all the spaces that you work in and yeah just keep shining your light on the world sonia and I'm, i hope this isn't the first time we we work together i'm sure this with a lot of the stuff that you do I, I have a lot of love for it and i'm still learning but i would love to you know help in any way i can too thank you very much thank you for your time thank you for having me on and let's hit 1700 episodes for you <laughs> let's go we're on ways <laughs> we're on way Thank you so much for watching this full episode of Mind the Mic. It takes a lot of time, energy and effort to create these episodes. So to know that you've watched and listened to the entire thing means the world to myself and all our hosts. If you could, before you leave, please hit the subscribe button and share this episode out to as many people as possible. It would help us so much. Thank you again to everybody that's still here, still watching. Thank you for all your comments, all your shares, all the DMs appreciate you all make sure you follow us on every platform have an awesome morning have an awesome night depending on where you are in the world mind the mic out oi have you hit the link in bio yet watch full episodes on youtube or listen on spotify apple Podcasts, and all streaming platforms Duh.